where do you stand on the engineering versus craftsmanship, craftspersonship, you know, spectrum? What what, what do you think it is? Um, it is that we do. Okay, so I I see myself as an engineer. Um, that's my training, and engineering, as as you I think have said, is is you know it's it's applying science, scientific methods, scientific principles to something very practical, and that has real world results, um, and is useful. So yeah. uh, that's that's great. Whereas craftsmanship is is kind of about the individual creator creating something that is used and is useful, usually um, like a violin or a a table or something um and they can there can be elements of artwork in that and i i like to think software is a little bit more hard science than that yeah um, reusable re repeatable transferable and the thing is i think this whole idea of craftsmanship became really popular among software developers because because the it's this romanticized image of this craftsman who is so proud of what they've built it's yeah. this image of quality expertise and pride and I, that is so attractive to software developers we we have this immense immo, um, innate motivation to build good software to yeah. do good design that we're proud of so we would like to have that and i think that's why this whole craftsmanship became so attractive but i think it's completely the wrong metaphor for what we actually do you know <laughs> I, 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 I agree with you uh, entirely. The, um, the, I, I, I think that the, the craftsmanship movement was, was, was timely. I, I think it was probably a necessary step, but I think it was a step away from something rather than a step towards something, really. Yeah. So it was a, a step away from kind of trying to, trying to use the techniques of manufacturing for software and apply them to software and almost attempting to eliminate the creativity which is which is stupid because software is an incredibly creative discipline um but but i think that's what went before through through the i think we suffered from that through the 80s and 90s and the, the craftsmanship movement started to move us away from that which was good but often when i get in conversations about engineering it's really about, and it's more of a, a, a debate about manufacturing rather versus software development than engineering versus software development. Because engineering is deep. All of the things that you just said about that people uh, apply to craftsmanship, you could just re re replace the word craft with engineering, and it still makes complete sense to me. So, 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 so it's it's an. I, I would I would argue as an engineer. I, 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 latterly, I've come to now once again think of myself as an engineer. I didn't always. I, I, I went I went through a period when I was at ThoughtWorks of disdaining the idea of of engineering for for a little while, but uh, but but now I don't. But 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 um, I, I I I I I would think that. Probably the height of human creativity is in engineering. If you're building the Mars rover or the the International Space Space Station or or the Internet, for goodness' sake, then these are done by engineers. These 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 are this is engineering thinking at play, and it's hugely creative and constrained by reality. You can't so 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 craft my 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 delightful gorgeous 3 year 3 year old um granddaughter does craft. But you wouldn't want you wouldn't want to use it or 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 your life to depend on on the fruits of her work. No, that's that's quite right. And that's it's in the the, the language as well. I mean, yeah. It's archaic. Craftsman yeah. is an archa archaic term. I don't want to be called a craftsman. Yeah. Um, and I don't want to be called a crafter either, because it sounds like I'm you know, <laughs> fiddling with like what your three-year-old granddaughter's doing. <laughs> yes. That's not what I'm doing. So I don't think it's a it's a very helpful analogy, actually. But I, I still like to tap into that feeling of pride and and oh, yes. quality. Yes. Quality and pride in what you do. That's that's valuable, but you can have that in engineering. 
I, 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 am, I, 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 I've done this for years. I annoy people around me when I'm working because when I, when I have that moment where you go, oh, I've got it. You know, when, you, when you have that, that, that moment of inspiration when you've got, you've got, you, you get a new insight into your solution or whatever. I'm the person that shouts out and go, yeah, or whatever. I'm taking great pleasure, joy in, in that moment of creativity, of inspiration, of, of, of actually engineering insight that, that we're talking about. So I, I'm absolutely with you that, um, we should be taking pride. We should be, we should be taking pride in taking ownership of our work. I think, hundred percent. What what do you what do you think that you bring to it then, from your background in non software engine, you know, proper engineering, <laughs> engineering before you came to software? Oh well, I mean, I my training was in engineering. This was a long time ago, Dave. <laughs> it was, uh, um, but yeah, I think it's it's uh, always wanting to learn new things and try out new techniques, and and there's always a better way to do things. Um, keep reading. That's that's some of the things that I still have with me from that time. I think. Yeah. That. Um, yeah, just that curiosity and that there must be a better way to do this kind of feeling. Um, I, 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 when, I, when I wrote my, my engineering book, um, I, I did a, a fair amount of research, in, as you do when you write a book, um, uh, into the history of software engineering. And uh, I, I just, uh, one of my heroes is, is Margaret Hamilton, who, who, who led the team doing the um, flight control systems for for, for many of the Apollo missions and the lunar lander in particular. Um, but one of the things that she talked about often, talks about often uh, in, in, in her work then was um, building man what she called man-rated systems. You know, people's lives depended on these things. They had to work. And so her focus and her team's fo she the focus she instilled in the teams that she led was, you know, Thinking in, you know, I, I, th I think of this as part of an engineering mindset of just thinking about all the ways that stuff can go wrong, you know, <laughs> and, and, and just thinking in terms of the ways in which things can go wrong and then how you want to cope with them, how you want to deal with them, how you want to test them, how you, you know, it's a new case for a test or whatever else. This clip was taken from my podcast, The Engineering Room with Dave Farley a monthly podcast with some of the brightest minds in software engineering. You can find full episodes on all your favourite podcast platforms, including Spotify, Apple Podcasts and Amazon Music. Your support helps us to bring the, you these regular episodes, so please leave your positive review on your preferred podcast platform to help us to continue to grow and bring you great guests and their insights. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs>